Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to yet another edition of the show. Trek Wednesday, start date 2016.034 at 2218 Eastern Standard Time. We have a special guest tonight, as well as a lot of different discussions going on on the state of the game. Sixth anniversary of Star Trek Online. Where is it at? What's it doing? How good is it? Are people coming back in droves or are we started looking off and seeing what's happening here? What's happening with the devs and the communication with the people? And, most importantly, what can you enjoy in the game itself? I'm joined tonight by our usual panel, our Chief Logistics Officer, Captain Timberwolf. Sir, lead us off with a good how. Thank you very much, good sir. I have with us our chief instructor, Teacher Kirby. Howdy, folks. How's it going tonight? Our chief ironic medic, please patch us up in an HSC so we can continue going on long and strong. Captain Mikey. No healing today, just peak deeps. No, 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 man. No, not the peak deeps bit. Peak deeps. Our Chief Intelligence Officer with some really juicy intel tonight. Thank you very much for joining us, Sarcasm Detector. <laughs> oh, this has got to be some gravelly good info. <laughs> yes, yes indeed. Uh, our Chief of Cheesy Tactics, so cheesy, not even a cheese grater can cut through that cheese. Captain SOB. Hello. And you know what? Before we introduce our guest, we have another special guest here. Somebody we keep forgetting about for some reason, but we don't know why. But I think something's in the works that we will make sure we remember this man and the work that he does. This is our chief immersion hologram. The man who puts us into the ideas of... Uh, you know, we forgot about what I was going to say. Who are you? Oh, you're, you're Zeph Films, aren't you? I don't know anymore. <laughs> The yeah. time I don't think he's well known enough. No, oh God, he's, no got amnesia. he's not well known enough. And our guest tonight, the man who was raided StarCraft and led the Zergling Rush time and time again, one of the chief agronauts and the man who has set HSC records left and right, Zerg of the Agronauts. Hello, everybody. Welcome. All right, bring us into the news here. State of the game. But before we even do that, I believe our chief intelligence officer has something very important to state. Ah, uh, yes. Intelligence sources have passed me some information regarding intelligence, uh, to be specific, in regards to IQ fleet. You guys remember IQ fleets, right? The site with the... Le I mean, the site with the information. Well, they are coming back exclusive to the show. We're letting you know right now. They should be up and running again, um, if not now or very, very soon, within 24 hours. They will be providing information again. Wow. Excellent. I, I could have sworn that they just went underground and stayed there for good, but man, they are actually coming back. And it seems they're coming back with some strength. Intriguing. All right, tonight we're actually going to jump straight into the patch notes, only because it's very, very informative and telling of what's happening here. Chief of Cheesy Tactics, give us something here with this. Well, people that have uh, had the Dice and Science Destroyer still slotted, um, well, with this patch, you'll now be able to uh, use the accumulations to fill it. And get that wonderful ship. Uh, but really, skipping the rest of these patch notes, which I personally don't care about, going to the thing that I do care about. They're apparently making some optimization changes that should hopefully resolve some of the lag issues that some players are experiencing. We've heard this one before, so let's hope this one does something. <laughs> Well, it's more than just lag that's been happening here lately, especially with the 6th anniversary. We've seen this thing before last year where after this patch, people's clients have become unstable. 
um, a lot of connection issues, etc. But there have been some work done by Cryptic to try and alleviate a lot of these issues here. Uh, hopefully it wouldn't take quite a long time as it did with the last major event to be able to fix issues like such, like Mac clients not connecting to the game at all. So we're hoping that this does add some more stability to the game as well as making the game a lot more enjoyable for a wider audience. I, I don't believe it. It's, it's <clears throat> Sorry, I was going to say something there, but it's... Uh... It's bullshit. Whenever they say that they're making changes and it won't affect anything, yeah, that is bullshit. We're, we're getting we're into ever. that part. We're getting into that part a little bit later on there. But at least far as far as the patch notes are concerned, they're stating that it is actually going to happen. They're making some adjustments to it. Now, we don't know whether it's they touched on some powers and they're going to touch on the others. If it's a complete rewrite, if it's basic inform, you know, just basic stuff that they can they can get to the easiest, and then they're going to work on more later on. We don't know. We've tried to personally, reach out to Dev for that, but we haven't got a response yet. Personally, I'm hoping that it has a great deal of effect and just you know screws up high yield. But it's okay. Just... It's okay because I'm waiting for the day where Fired Will gets the exact same treatment. Like torpedo spread, then I'm I want to hear your QQ. Cry? Oh no, I'm not gonna cry. I'm not gonna cry because no matter what happens, I'm still gonna shine. SOB well, though, he's gonna cry right whenever right? Firewall gets the same treatment like torpedo spread. But yeah. it, it did. No, it didn't. We'll no, it didn't. Later. Well, we'll partially. discuss it later though. Partially. With we'll a certain discuss ability. That later. Exactly. Um, there's actually some decent fixes here to time and tide that has been annoying a vast majority of players to the point that they literally have to give up the mission and try again later and hopefully this will resolve at least most of those issues there oh and um here's something a little bit of note that i actually looked at and, and had a little chuckle with the sixth anniversary party popper now has a number six on it instead of the number five it's yeah you Oops. know Oops, copy and paste code and try to change it there. I understand, late night, too much coffee, not enough sleep. Been there, done that, had the headaches with it. I understand. Kudos on fixing it as quick as possible. Anything else we want to discuss with this? Uh, this just means that we're going to have to spend quite a lot of hours testing to make sure they didn't break another thing which actually and brings us thing. sorry i just want to say uh, captain phil yeah go ahead please uh actually could you send me the link in game and i will post that just replying to the chat go ahead odin well, that, what you just said actually segues us straight into the state of the game. We're doing the 2016 edition here, but it's a state of the game round two. In this case, we're wanting to look at several different things here. One of them being, with every patch, why is it up to the players to have to go through and retest things to see whether they are working properly or not? Yeah, it is a key issue, especially with communication, and it was really brought to light with the uh, patch last Thursday, in which there was not a single patch note mentioning the change to any powers whatsoever, but we could find multiple instances, things that had been severely changed, and no communication was made about them. So, it, it would be nice to, you know be told things are going to be changed. That's the point of patch notes. If you're not going to put your patch notes in your patch notes, what's the point of releasing patch notes? But, uh, I, yeah, I think the, the point is that I should be able to convey, excuse me, convey to the community what the changes are and what's happening within the game itself so that people would be advised of any anything new that would be 
in place to alter their play style or some other interaction that they should be aware of so that they themselves can make adjustments to try and enjoy the game. I'm sure that the people who spent about a hundred and some odd million on Chemosite are just wondering why it's doing less than, you know, one turret that's unbuffed. But, you know, that, that's just yet another example of things that, are keep, that keep changing after every patch that somehow we have to go back and see, okay, this is what happened here. Why did this happen here? There's no communication. When we ask questions on it on the official forums, nothing yet. We talked with bug bashers on this to try and see what's happening there. No response. It, it, it kind of leaves us frustrated as far as players are concerned on things like this happening over and over and over again. And so we as players should actually demand more from a game as far as what the quality that comes out to it so we can enjoy the game and then we can further fund this game. And I understand that there are people who say that, yeah, this is a free-to-play MMO. And yes, the, most of the me mechanics in this game are actually very good for free-to-play as far as allowing players to be able to enjoy all the content. They just need to spend time and effort in the game to do so. But when you're looking at this and people are investing their time and effort to try and enjoy it, and they can't even enjoy the fruits of their labor while supporting you, or the people who are actually paying real money to support Cryptic Studios can't even enjoy that, people are starting to get frustrated. So, the change that, if in case you haven't heard the exact change to site as far as we can tell by looking at the math and the parses, there is now a 2.5% chance that when you activate Chemosite for your, in, in your run, that you will get crits during that run. Then, when you... Um, so you can end up easily with no crits on your Chemosite for a run. And one of the issues with this is... It's uh, impossible to know that this change happened unless you're running a parser. You're just going to suddenly be not doing being effective as you were. Now, was it previously critting in line with what your character's crit chance was before this change? Yes, it was. Yes. I'd like to add to that that the kinetic community has noticed this exact phenomenon happening on their last major change with torpedo spread. It affected both torpedo spread and high yield. And when that was brought up, what, over, what, two months ago now at this point, not many people listened or paid attention because, you know, oh, it's those freaking kinetic people. They're all crazy and wacky anyway. Well, now it would affect the energy community and all the fire will users that like chemo, not just for the debuff, but for the radiation damage too, and it's not working as it was advertised. Something's up now. I have two theories on this, which I'll, I'll go over them. The, the first theory, and I believe um, Mikhail actually agrees with me on this part, is that they were trying to reduce lag. So they probably have issues with chemocyte causing lag, and instead of yeah. instead of actually, you know, putting together any fixes, they just reduce the proc rate and its crits. They just, you know, nerfed it down into the ground. Yeah, whether intentional or not, I think that some some change meant to mitigate lag with chemocyte ended up horrifically reducing its functionality. The other theory that I have, and this um, harkens back to when they, one of the nerfs to the plasma consoles, the crits of the plasma consoles. Remember what they, uh, they couldn't fix or didn't have the time to fix the crits with uh, the cannon abilities and some of the other abilities to put them on par with how the um, plasma consoles worked with fall. 
they instead decided to disable the crits with Fa to bring them into parity. <clears throat> Fix. They broke it. So I think they might have done the same thing here. You know, like you said, there are problems with chemocyte working with torpedoes or, you know, to be honest, not working with torpedoes. And instead of fixing these issues, they broke it so that there's parity. Which That's, would wow. be more understandable if they were to, you know, tell us that they changed this. But if you look at the patch notes from what released a week ago, or even on the for the Friday patch, there is not a single mention of chemocyte. Not one. There is no nerf. anywhere. They just nerfed it. That's what they did. And they didn't bother to tell anybody. Which is why I think maybe it was an accident. I guess we'll see. We'll see if it's publicly addressed, number one, which I have my doubts. Uh, and then we'll see how it's fixed, if it's fixed. Maybe. Maybe it was an accident, but it's... An accident that seems conveniently timed. Well, it, even if it was an accident, at least some sort of acknowledgement would be nice. You know, say, hey, look, all right, you know, we we messed up here. We're going to fix it. That's it. No big deal. That's fine. I understand that. Just a quick line. Hey, we'll fix this. Done. Tweet it. Post it on Reddit. Post it on the forums. That's all you need to say. That's been done in the past. So it's not unreasonable to have that level of communication, even if it's just a short blurb, just to say, hey, look, we're going to fix it. And then scoot off. Do what else, what other things you're going to do. That's fine. But when we're in the dark on this, with something that allegedly is supposed to be working this way, like that's what you advertise it for, and then it doesn't happen that way on one patch, we start wondering what's going on here. And then are we going to start thinking, okay, are anything else we want to quote unquote put our effort into to obtaining, is that going to change too to the point we're not going to enjoy it? I understand if it was something to, to alleviate mechanics issues or, you know what, not even the whole client and server interaction issue isn't going to work on this one here. Because the issue is not with those powers themselves, but the actual game client needing to be updated and the protocols that are used to communicate with the client need to be rewritten period so enough with the crazy nerfs to a couple things here and there and then scooting off fix the thing fix the root cause of the problem because all we're going to do with all this extra power creep coming down the line is kicking the can down the road and eventually you can't kick it any further you just ran into a giant mountain yeah it's they're trying to fight lag, if it's, this is what it came from. They're fighting it at the wrong place. And the thing is, chemocyte's still proccing exactly at 10% for um, energy weapons. So it, that part is working. The proc rate is perfectly fine. So the only thing that got changed was its ability to crit went from, oh, you get between, you get around whatever your crit rate is for your ship. Well, Within you a do. couple of percentage points. You do. Well, yeah. I don't. Okay. The the torpedoes they they mess that up. And apparently they decide to go ahead, or at some point they messed it up the same way for energy weapons. Whether this was an intentional change or somebody messed up with the code, which given that they never said they were changing anything about chemocyte. I don't know why anybody would even be working with the code for chemocyte to change it. But, you know, things happen. If it was a mistake, come out and tell us it's a mistake. Put it in the patch notes, maybe. That'd be a novel idea. Yeah, and this yeah. isn't the first time they've tried to leave something out of the patch notes either. Um, as I recall, we only found out about the plasma consoles because somebody was playtesting on Tribble and realized that the crits weren't there in Tribble and it was not in the Tribble patch notes and it was only added to the holodeck patch notes after we brought it up on the forums. 
Ironically, we were playtesting on Tribble because we do not trust the devs. We have to, every single time they patch, we have to go through and make sure they haven't broken, stealth nerfed something. Now, it isn't so much that we just want to go and hate on people, but it's it's a point where we literally have to keep looking over our shoulder and seeing what changed. And part of the reason we do that is because people start looking to this group of people here on this panel for answers. And we have this obligation to the community to provide them with answers. We're not ragging on you just because we feel like ragging on you. This is what's actually happening. And we're trying to find a way to say, look, we're working with you here on this. Here's some free QA. These are the issues here that, that need to be addressed. Let's get to it. I understand there are other things here, and I understand that you have a limited staff, but the very least, a little bit of acknowledgement on something here it would say, yes, this is good. This is good. We'll get on it when we can. That goes miles, miles with it. In the name of lag, we were able to say, look, all right, take away whatever little bells and whistles so we can fix the server performance and the client performance issues here. We know what the root cause is. We just say, you know what, for the time being, yes, do it. But now, other things are coming up. We need to have the root cause fixed or else we're going to go back to the same song and dance over and over and over. Kicking over to another piece here, we're going to look at this situation with ISP and connection issues. And we're going to have to deal with a lot of major ISPs who are connecting through the Cryptic Studios are having the, the uh, sorry, the, a lot of the major people playing the game on major ISPs connecting to Cryptic Studios are having some issues with it. PNAP in place, this is still a problem. And when people are trying to use the proxy servers in the United States to connect to Cryptic that maybe have some sort of uh, of help with that it doesn't work why is it that folks in the united states who are not only geographically but from a network standpoint close to one of your major hubs has to use a european proxy server to connect to your game to be able to go and do an event that doesn't make sense and it's not one or two people it's, it's several groups of people from different ISPs. Now, if it's one or two major ISPs, okay, we could say maybe there's a fight between one backbone and another backbone. That, okay, we get it. But when you have several different people from multiple ISPs, both major and minor, going through to the same, uh, going through fine on other games or going through the same network and can communicate fine with each other, but when they get to that cryptic IP, things just go to hell. You have to ask, is it really them? Is it an ISP war? Or is it something with your network that's just not handling the traffic? You also have a group of people who are trying to add more flavor to the game and giving you suggestions. Suggestions that if half of them were to to start up their own company, they would have some great game ideas. Give these people something. And then we'll, if you need us to yell at somebody to get you more purse money to hire more people, even if it's just temporary for this project. Yeah, we'll do that. Just tell us who to yell at. We'll do it. We'll petition them. Hey, look, here's a nice money making investment for you here. Here's how much people would like to pay for you here. Here's a cost benefit analysis for you. Here's what you can do to help make this game better for other people to enjoy. And you get a much wider net of people starting to come into this game and playing because they see other people enjoying it. Because they see, hey, look, I'm interested in something like this. Let me go in and play with it. We're going to put the link to that thread in the show notes. And you can go through this. And you can see how many great ideas there are in here. And you will just, just be, oh, wow. You know what? We could probably spend six months developing this system here that even play off of existing systems like the admiralty system 
so that you can not only have an extension of your own system, but monetize it. We're trying to throw you a bone here. Take it. SOB, give us something on what's happening with the the uh, paradox here. Oh, sorry, that's that's actually my section here. Oh, that's your section. Oh, my bad, my yeah, bad. Yeah. You handle it then. I, I don't so, want to make him grumpy. Ooh, make him grumpy. So, um, I've been running the paradox for a bit, and so has um, our buddy Valak in FX, and uh, you know we were testing it out, doing various different builds. And Valken actually noticed quite a few bugs with the ship. Um, and I've actually gone through and confirmed several of those bugs myself. Um, just to go through them, this is probably the buggiest ship at release. I don't think I've seen a ship with this many bugs at release as the Paradox. Not really big major bugs, but the amount of problems that are associated with it is just um just kind of makes my head spin a little bit i mean did they not test the ship so i'm just gonna go through the the bugs here there's a couple with the console the console itself does next to no damage what the console does is it um, fires off a few gravwell anomalies and um, they actually will kind of do a slow they don't actually work like real grab wells they don't actually stop anything in their tracks they kind of just slow them down um, i don't think the gravity gens work with them i don't think it affects them i don't think particle gens work with them um particle manipulator definitely does not work and they do almost next to no damage so that from that point of view it is kind of useless um, the other thing, so this console comes with the ship, right? And you have a trait that comes with the ship. The, tr the trait, what it does is your gravity wells and Tykin's rift anomalies, when they expire, will do a explosion. And we'll talk about that in a couple seconds because that's bugged as well. That trait, the ship's trait, does not work with the ship's console wrap your head around that the trait from the ship does not work with a console from the ship wow just uh, i don't understand it the trait itself it says that it that the explosion when the anomalies expire do 100 percent shield penetrating damage they do not their shield damage seems to be, or their damage that they do, seems to be 100% absorbed by shields. And they're pretty much like a, a photonic burst. So, yeah, that's not working. The shield pad's not working. The other thing, these, uh, the trait does not work with any of the aftershocks. So there, there are a couple of DOFs that you can have, uh, I think I have gravimetric DOFs, that create aftershocks, either aftershocks gravity wells or grav, um, aftershock Tykin's Rift. The trait does not work on those aftershocks. By the way, the gravity well aftershock DOF does not work. It just does not work at all. Um, tested it extensively, and it does not seem to proc any aftershock gravity wells. The Titan's Rift one does, but it doesn't seem to be at a 25% rate, which is what's on the tooltip. It seems to be much reduced. So, yeah, more bugs. The pets are bugged as well, and there's a few bugs associated with the pets. Um, first of all, when you launch them, they'll fire their torpedoes once. That's it. They just never fire their torpedoes again after that. You have to basically have the uh, pets die and relaunch them in order to fire torpedoes again. Same thing with their little disruptor beam. They'll fire it off once when they release, and that's it. 
and they don't fire them again. You have to have them get destroyed and re-release them. The other funny thing about them, so when you have a hangar of these ships, um, it, I know it, they are called shuttles, but they're actually fighters. So they release when you the first time you release them, they shoot out three ships and then three ships again for a total of six. Um, when you uh, when you're staggering them. So you hit your little launch button and it shoots off the first three ships. Only one ship out of those three will fire a high yield or a disruptor beam. Only one, not three. Now, if you had already launched all six ships and docked them and then released them, then they will all fire their high yields and disruptors. But if you're staggering them, only one ship per wing will fire its high yield or its disruptor beam. So that's about, what, seven bugs with this ship on release? Do they not do any testing, any QA? I, I don't get this. I don't get this at all. Maybe they, um, the pets probably just weren't members of the Kennedy community on onset. So they're like SOB, fire only one torp and then quit. Yeah. Oh. I assure you that I fired many torps back when Chemosite was, you know, it, it just really good with torps. Well, hold on. You mean fired Chemosite when it was bugged to hell and you can exploit the hell out of it, right? Well, actually, you know, too, I did use a torp. On, I was messing with uh, Cam's favorite ship recently, the Ox to Defiant. Um, and I do still have a Neutronic with Torp Spread 3 on that. And then, you know, cannons. Yeah, but it's not as effective anymore because only the main target actually gets that radiation damage. And by the way, we did the numbers. It's an overall nerf, and it is very significant. So the damage increase for that main target uh, plus the radius blast, uh, the blast radius uh, does not compensate for the other torps actually doing radiation damage and the numbers were even if you'd had one torp for each target do the actual radiation damage to that target ah that's still more than what this current change is too so yeah sob your oxid defiant got neutered hard yep stop making me sad well there's always a change, you know, you can always go mines. Well, that, that brings me to a, a related point to what we were saying earlier about patch notes communication. When a power works exactly as you describe it's supposed to work, that is working as intended. If you didn't intend it to be ridiculously overpowered, when you wrote the description that lists it as being ridiculously overpowered, then you really need to examine what you're doing with your game. Now, I understand in MMOs Ed, that things need to change over time as new powers are released, and there's supposed to be some semblance of balance, whether you're balancing game mechanics or overall performance. I get that. I understand that. I accept it. That, that's part of the game, and it should evolve properly like that. But when you have things that are being, in this case, arbitrarily changed, just attempt to, you know... Throw, throw something against the wall and see what sticks to try and fix a problem, and it doesn't, yeah. you leave one questioning why. And then you leave one questioning why when you're, when you're reducing X, Y, and Z powers on one side, but you're increasing it and then adding more things to interact with something else on the other, it makes you wonder what your end goal really is. If you're saying it's going to do this to help increase performance... But then you're adding something else that would decrease performance. Doesn't work. It's not selling. Now, what's this I hear about uh, some DOF assignments not uh, not no longer showing up since the last patch? No, no, no. It's not a DOF assignment. It's the investigate officer reports uh, for doing a foundry mission. I saw that on Reddit, and that was just asked a little bit ago, and... Uh, the chat it's apparently if I recall the thread it hasn't been here since the last batch it just stopped showing up 
Yeah, it's something I always keep slotted because I try to do one foundry a day just to test out, you know, storylines or maybe I'm doing something that's quick and easy. I haven't been able to play use that for a good week now, which is kind of irritating. Now explain this to me, please. Like, you know, explain it like I'm five. Just to make sure that the rest of the audience, as well as myself, know exactly what this is and what it means to me in the game. Investigate Officer Reports is a little, nice little assignment that you can pick up that will give you the lithium for doing a Foundry mission that qualifies. And it's 960 dilithium. It can be repeated every 30 minutes when it was in the game until it disappeared. So 960 every 30 minutes for a qualifying Foundry. And Foundry is still working right now, right? Foundry is still working. That is interesting. That is very interesting. Whew, more things to ponder and consider. You know what? I think we're going to continue this at a later date, and we're definitely going to be moving this over, uh, the, the bulk of conversations along this line, over to Valakin's stream next week, Monday. That'll be on the 8th at, I believe he's starting at, was it 3 p.m. Eastern? I'll double check with the times, but we're going to include in the show notes along with all of his information. Sorry, say that again. 12.30 p.m. Eastern time. 12.30 p.m. Eastern time. So that's going to be, let me see, it's going to be about 5.30 p.m. his time. 5.30 p.m. Zulu. So you And uh, Primar... Go on. Sorry. Primar 13 says investigate officer reports has been confirmed as a bug and is being fixed. Thank you. Just to go on about Valken's stream, it's going to be a huge stream this Monday. We're going to have some special guests. We are going to be continuing this discussion about the state of the game, not just in the technical terms as we were talking about tonight, but in regards to other things as well. Uh, I will be there. Odin's going to be there as well, as well as some other guests from... Um, well, I don't want to spoil it, but just say that you guys will want to might want to tune in for this one. Like I said, um, we will have some special guests, and it's going to be a pretty long conversation. It will be indeed. So tell your friends who can make it. It'll also be recorded on his Twitch stream. So if you missed it, you can go and see it there. You also catch it on his YouTube. I believe he has his, shunt, uh, his Twitch stream shunted over to his YouTube. If I'm mistaken on that, he'll correct me. But we'll have all his contact info there. Like him, subscribe him, join up on his Twitch. Tweet to the man. Every so often, you know what? He's Brit. He gets lonely because, yeah, whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll show him some love. He's not getting enough from his cat. Nah, his cat loves him so much. He tries to talk to me. keeps kicking the cat. I could kick the cat. You know why? You know why? Probably because he wanted beams on a Fayette and it's puppy approved and the cat does not like beams on a Fayette. That's probably well, why. Well played, sir. Well played. Well played, Odin. Well played. Timberwolf, give us some info on uh, Buddy Loot Critter out there. Um, well, I worked with him, as always. I try to work with him on any new ships that are coming out. Um, I was able to get the Paradox through him, so I will have a review of that coming out. But the first thing I did was I worked with him to get a Mesh Weaver review out on his site. That turned out rather nice. I do like that ship, and I'm glad that they're actually fixing the console layout. I think that could work. It'll work against some people that have gotten used to it being the, the quote-unquote wrong layout. But overall, I think it's going to be a nice change. So we've got that in the description, and just if you have one, don't be so quick to sell it, especially if you have more than one. Give it a shot. It's worth it. And if I see correctly, My Balkan Gaming has also done his review on the Mesh Weaver as well. 
this past week. Another great reviewer. You definitely want to check out his review as well. Yes, and for the people who don't know, my Balkan Gaming was actually the reason why I returned to STL. So, for better or for worse, Cryptic, thank my Balkan Gaming for bringing me back, as well as a couple other people into this game. And yes, we threw down some real money to help fund you. So he's the one that started this torpedo craze. He's the catalyst. So yeah, so you go back in time, you gotta erase my Balkan Gaming in order to erase me. <laughs> Temporal paradox? Nah. Well, on, on top of the Meshweaver reviews, and like I said, I have a paradox review coming out later, but Sarcasm has his paradox HSE tanking slash draining run. He has that posted. I have yet to watch it myself, but from what I understand, it is a nice build and a nice run. And he's also posted his review of the Tholian Tarantula. A full review of that starship. You definitely want to check those videos out. It's very thorough what he does when he tests out of a starship. Let me tell you. Indeed, for the Tarantula video, that also includes as a link to the uh, a tanking run. That's actually I built a aggro tank out of that. And for the Paradox, I haven't done the review yet. That should be coming out uh, towards the end of this week, or maybe by the weekend. That is a aggro tank slash drain build that Valakin and I actually came up with. Um, basically on his stream on Monday, someone was asking about a drain build for a Paradox. And we basically built it right there. And as we were building it, we were like, hmm, we, we, we both want to try this out. So I made one and he made one as well. He's currently testing his drain build. I've actually moved on and gone to a shutdown particle build. But the particular Hive Space Elite run that we were in, um, both Odin was in there. He, you see him in his Manticore. And our guest tonight, Zurg, was in it as well. He was flying the other, the other um, Paradox in there. Also as a uh, aggro tank. And it was free damage, about, to say the least. Yeah, um, you, Odin, you also recorded that, so I'm um, looking forward to seeing a video done from your point of view. Yeah, it's the first time I'm actually, I'm just literally just getting my toes wet with the whole demo record and video editing. I like to do things raw and off the cuff and just throw it up there. But um, I'm starting to learn from all of you as far as how to do proper edits and, and make things look pretty. I, I'm not good at making things look pretty. <laughs> so, all right, before we continue on with the, the rest of the things here, um, you realize that uh, my last couple of videos have been working on aggro ships, aggro tanks, and um, we have a guest with us from the Agronauts, and um, let's talk about that for a second here, Zerg. Yes. What are the Agronauts? The Agronauts, to be a full member of the Agronauts, you have dedicated at least one of your characters to be a high DPS threat tank. And what that means is your ship that goes into an ISA run and three quarters of all the shots fired in the run are fired at you almost regardless of who you're running with, unless you're talking about other people who would qualify as Agronauts. Now, this leads you to run specialized builds that rely on things like Reciprocity, Attack Pattern Delta Prime, the new improved feedback pulse, and um, Reciprocity re really works well with all hands on deck to keep other cooldowns in line. So you're a high self-healing, high DPS. I think we've got the highest DPS engineers, like four of the top five, and the highest DPS size are Agronauts, and it's, it's a way to be supportive while not sacrificing your effectiveness in a run. Now hold on a second. Wait, wait a second. Here, you're you're saying a high DPS tank. 
I mean, I've heard this a lot before where people say, well, hey, I'm, I'm a tank. I don't need to do DPS. What's it, that about? In order to draw aggro in Star Trek Online, you have to do damage. Threat, mod threat modifiers from plasma consoles, from the embassy, and from attract fire, and from your skills add a multiplier to that damage. But at the end of the day, you have to do DPS to lots of targets in order to draw threat. And in, or in order to draw threat, you have to do high DPS, and when you build your tank right, drawing threat improves your ability to do DPS. So it's it's possible to be an aggro tank and have aggro and be uh, survivable and do DPS at the same time. Yes. We've got no, three sorry, go ahead. 100k plus engineers in aggronauts right now. Is it solely limited to engineers? No, you can be a science, you can be a tank. I mean, you've you've made the you've made the full aggronauts now with that hive run the other day. Your your attack on your main character, you, and uh, I'm I'm a side side captain. I I didn't start the concept of agronauts, but I started the group of agronauts, and it's it's something that has evolved to be a play style and a and a group of players that specifically go after the hardest content in the game. Now I heard that one of the requirements, um, annoyingly so, was this is you know earlier, was that in order to be a really good agronaut, you have to break Jenna or my main character's reciprocity build. Well, before you got a five threat console ship that you were running regularly and well, that was quite easy to do, but. Um, Gee, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> this but, is something. Uh, so, how long has the Agronauts been around? Um, in our current form, it's going on about six months now. So, it, it's 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 been a bit, but not terribly long in the overall scheme of things. So yeah, I, I've actually uh, moved on to trying different aggro builds, and like Zurich has said, there really isn't that much of a difference between doing a high DPS build, just a pure DPS ship, and a aggro tank build. Primarily because most of the, the current meta for high DPS builds, most of them are off tanks in the first place. So it's a matter of just adding a little bit of extra survivability. Yeah, and this is true. A little extra survivability. I mean, you lose, what, um, 15 to 25% of your maximum DPS, but you effectively double or triple your survivability? Well, that's more true for TAC captains than it is for... Um science and engineering captains, where science and engineering captains, if anything, they gain DPS by going for an agronaut build than by going for a traditional high DPS build for their class. As a, <laughs> as a captain both who flies both TAC and Psy, uh, and knowing that torpedoes as well as science abilities draw a crap ton of threat in this game, as if you're sitting right next to the mobs and knocking him saying, Hey, hey, hello, I'm bothering you, shoot at me. Having an agronaut or two in a run is a whole world improvement for quality of life, especially especially on high DPS runs. It's a huge quality of life improvement. Yeah, especially for um, runs like Hive Space Elite. Um, normally, when a high-powered group, even a high-powered DPS group that is running like 100k plus DPS ships, when they go into a Hive Space Elite, you're gonna get, um, you know, half a dozen deaths per pilot, if not more. And that tends to draw them out. So, I mean, I've seen runs where people have like a dozen deaths 
in Hive Space Elite. You get a, a good couple of tanks, just two good tanks in there. Um, not to mention a healer, but we'll, we'll not go into that at the moment. But just having a couple of tanks in there will reduce the total deaths um, down to like maybe half a dozen. Maybe you can count them, the, the total deaths on one hand. There are still some one-shot mechanics in there so you, that you can't avoid, but... You can't Sorry, McKay, go ahead. Dead, so that's that's kind of a point. That's why the tanks are so good. You can't kill things if you're dead. Yep. And uh, that also brings up slightly another point of I don't like about the game is there are s still invisible plasma torpedoes fired by random Borg enemies that can do 500,000 base damage. So even if you've got 75% resistance to kinetic going on, you still die, period. There is no ship that can get over 125k hull unless you've completely gone for full turtle, in which case you're not dealing any damage because you went full turtle. And that's <laughs> a mechanic that probably shouldn't be around, especially since they're invisible torpedoes. Oh yeah, we've been complaining about the Invisitorps, the, the Instajib ones for years. Since this game came out. Oh, and <laughs> there's a there's a bug with the invisible torpedoes on top of them being, you know, invisible Instagib torpedoes, is they kill you even through invincible. And shields. Oh yeah. And rock and roll. I remember getting killed by invisible torpedoes when I was grinding for prototype tech. Oh my gosh, Way that's back. ages ago. Yeah, that was ages, yeah. So basically the Instatorp is just a, the server says, you're dying and it doesn't matter what you do, what immunities you have, what Hit abilities scan you for have. The win. You're dead, yep. Inst Instatorp for the win. You know what? They should release a patch note saying that invisible torps will randomly target players in any Borg match and kill you. New mechanic. Um, they've actually, I think they've removed them from ISA, some of the uh, advanced queues. I don't think I've seen an advanced torp or like an Instagip torp in those in a while. But for the, the elite, there's only one, the Hive Space Elite. The It still exists and it's actually... Um, quite hilarious you um if you have invincible on and it hasn't procced yet so theoretically it should stop you from dying right it's invincible that's what the proc says right you get hit with one of these insta -gyp torpedoes you might be at full shields and full hull you'll die instantly you're dead but your invincible will still proc You'll, it'll pop up the two icons, the one with the eight second timer and the one with the, was it a minute, minute and a half timer will both pop up? Two minute. Two minute timer, sorry. Yeah, the lockout and the timer that says that you are invincible for this long. Good yeah, duration. it's funny because you'll be, you'll be dead, you'll be sitting there exploding, your ship's exploding, and you look at your little flags there and you'll notice that the two icons for invincible has have popped up. Back onto the Agronauts. Now, a build like this, especially when you're going into advanced and elites, actually encourages people to start working out who's doing what role and function so that when you're doing something at that point, you're saying, okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to be drawing a lot of the threat. X person and Y person are going to be doing a lot of high DPS target through my target. And these other folks here, manage your control, manage your heals while you're doing damage, because this game is still damage oriented any which way you slice it, uh, while they're doing other supplemental roles. And I, I ran a run with Mikey here, who played Chief Medic across all of us, and it was pretty damn fun to see that. Woo! There's really nothing that, um, you know, other than PvP, which I really do miss, there's really nothing that's as much fun as throwing heals at four different people during a, a hive in, within the span of like 10 seconds. Dude, that was freaking epic. I think I got that I've... demo recorded too as well. Mm -hmm. The Elite, this is the sad thing. This is um, something that 
I've you know talked about before the only places that you actually need various roles different roles is the elite queues which we are sadly lacking in hint elite. hint but the in the advanced queues you, you really don't need these um, these different roles you can still just power through them with high DPS so unfortunately for the high powered runs of a high powered run of ISA or any of the other advanced queues you can simply get through it with high DPSers and a tank or a healer is not is not necessary at all unfortunately in the current state the current nerf state the softened state of the advanced queues that we have back when the advanced queues were first released with delta rising the queues were quite a bit harder um, back then would have been a good time to actually start having people do various roles like the control role the debuffer the shutdown build the drain build the aggro tank etc and maybe if they actually release some difficult content, difficult elite queues, like we've been asking for years now, it's it's well over a year, um, maybe these roles can actually start shine. Maybe more people can start getting into that. I would like to talk about well-designed queues and not just HP sponges and time gates. And instant chip mechanics. All right, does anybody else have any questions for our Agronaut member here before we move on? Or any questions from the chat? What chat. would Garrick do? What do you think Garrick would do for a Klondike bar? Endure torture. Garrick? The question was for Zerg. Yes, Garrick, the Cardassian. What, what would Garrick do with what? I'm sorry. What, what would Garrick do for a Klondike bar? He'd run a healer in a hive. I love a Klondike bar. Garrick was right about one thing. A guilty conscience is a stroll, small price to pay for the safety of the Alpha Quadrant. So I will learn to live with it. All right, um, I have a question here. How do people, how are they able to get in contact with you? If someone wants to become a, an aggro tank, how do they join the Agronauts? Um, if you message me in game at Zerg539, it's my handle, um, and link me to a parse that the junior Agronaut qualification is using ISA. It is, you draw. 50% of the attacks in while doing 50k DPS in a run where everybody averages at least 50k DPS. Now that doesn't mean everybody has to be over 50k DPS, just the average DPS for the run has to be above 50k. Then I will add you to the chat channel. And the rules beyond that point are the Wheaton's Golden Rule, don't be a dick. And for full Lagernaut status, you have to run Hive with us. You have to run um, while doing 35k DPS in a Hive while drawing 40% of the attacks in if there is no other Agronaut tank. If there is another Agronaut tank, it drops to 30%. And then if you accomplish that, you become a full Agronaut. But Hive is the Proving Grounds. Because now a, uh, it is the only content that is acceptable to test your actual ability to actually tank in the game. There is a chat channel in the game for the Agronauts. You get invited to that. And I believe there's also a, um, a Reddit subreddit for there the Agronauts a, as well. There is a Reddit subreddit called r slash sto Agronauts. S-T-O Agronauts. A-G-G-R-O-N-A-U-T-S. Yeah, I'm adding that to the show notes so that will pop up when the uh, when that gets released. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. All right, everybody. Class is in session. Teacher Kirby, teach us a lesson. Okay. 
So this week's Teacher's Corner, um, actually I was I did it at the request of Steve Hyla in chat, and I hope I said that right. Um, he asked if we could do a uh, if I could do a video on how to download and, and set up the parser. So my vi the video shows where you can find the SCM parser, the Stoke Combat Meter, and how to download it, how to link it, how to create a combat log and link it so that you can then go and parse yourself in ISA. And I go over a few of the features like how to look at the different um, charts that it shows and how to look at the player analysis reports and things like that. So that's the Teacher's Corner for this week. So the link is in the show notes. Enjoy. Thank you very much, well, no. teacher. Thank you. Um, actually, there was a question that just popped up in the chat. I just saw it. Um, question from T. Morrow. Is there a specific ship that is best for each class that makes a better tank? Uh, no. The Generally speaking, the best tank ships are going to be the best tank ships no matter which class you're in. The so ones I would highly recommend, um, Tal Shiar Adapted Battlecruiser, the Shishar, the um, Tarantula, the Resreth, the Science Odyssey, T5U, the um, Paradox, and the um, Anoraks both make good tanks, but they require a higher level of skill to get working as a tank. Um, Generally speaking, though, a, any cruiser that has uh, three or more science consoles um, and attract fire and or attract fire is going to make a good tank. The reason you want three or more science consoles is because you need the threat scaling, the threat amplifying um, embassy plasma consoles. Without those, tanking is very very difficult. Um, just because of how threat mechanics in the game work. Even if you go a pure exotic damage science build, you're not going to generate enough threat to pull it off of um, some players, especially if they have any um, points of threat skill. So you really just are looking at high hull, seven or more weapons, generally speaking, um, though you can use most of the science carriers as a generally decent tank. Um, actually, most of the carrier, most of the full carriers in the game make decent tanks, uh, but it's just um, high hull is one thing you're looking at. High shield modifiers are great, and it's but it doesn't matter if you're a psi or an engineer or tact or a tactical captain. The same ships are going to be the recommended ships for tanks. Period. The Jesse the Medic just asked Jupiter slash Aatrox. I would say Jupiter, yes, tentatively. Aatrox, perhaps not. Aatrox can, but it is very difficult because it has a lower DPS cap. Um, there's been, as far as I know, less than a dozen runs of an Aatrox that have cracked 50k on ISA. And when I say 50k on ISA is the requirement for Agonauts, that's really the point where you are, you have to get to generate enough threat to be a high-end tank. So, I mean, I've broken 50k with an Aatrox once. Zoe, um, uh, Dishishing, uh, from, uh, it is also, who's also an Agonauts, she's broken it a few times with her alt. But it's it's a very a very limited ship damage wise, and it's a bit more difficult. The Jupiter has some more um, punch to it compared to the Aatrox, so it's a bit easier to do. But uh, the real tanking um, uh, carriers would be the Recluse and the Sarthelm, in my opinion. Well, the, the Dreadnought carriers could pull it and off the as well. Carriers, yes, and the Dreadnought carriers. 
Didn't Velgon um, have some sort of rating scale for different ships with tanks, and does he still keep that active? Um, I have not seen an update to it in a while. It's probably not up to date. There's only been a few ships released since the last update, though, so that shouldn't take too much. Right. Get on it, Felgon. I know he's having some computer issues right now, but I'll ping him on it and see what's up. Zerg, what about the Resreth? I remember you talking about that quite a bit before it came out. Has that made the list as a good tanking vessel platform? Yes, it will be good for anybody who has it as a tank. It is not going to be as good as a Shishar or Tarantula right now. It's not going to be quite good. It's not It's not the S-plus god-tier tank like the Shishar and the Tarantula or the Science Odyssey. But it is the best tank available from any of the free ships released so far. By far. It is a solid A, possibly an S, but not an S+. Plus. I will try and get the link for that in the thread as far as for those who want to see the rating scale. We'll try and get a link through that put into the show notes. Uh, last question on the Agronauts here. We got from Lord Ice. What is the opinion from the Agronauts of Radiant AP weapons? Um, generally speaking, they I would not run, uh, run any of them other than the Advanced Radiant Antiproton weapon. Which kind of fits into the way the meta is going with plus beam consoles and just whatever beams are best. Right. And the the rest of the weapons, the issue is they are lower DPS than regular anti-proton weapons by a noticeable amount. And when you lower your DPS, you lower your threat. And the proc for the temporary hull isn't as valuable as you would imagine. Thank you very much, Indeed. sir. Um, just want to add one thing. We, we, we've been talking about that the primary way of generating threat is, of course, um, damage DPS from your weapons. Um, because most of the threat, um, threat magnifying abilities just multiply the threat you get from your weapons, from your damage. There are other ways to generate threat. They're not as good as weapons fire. But the science abilities, most of the science abilities will generate threats. The, the ones you throw around, like Gravwell and you know Tykin, Scramble Senses, all those will generate threat as well. And as McKay can attest, healing will also generate threat. If you heal someone who is being uh -huh. focused, if you heal someone who's being focused by NPCs, you will jump to the top of the threat table. Yes, and on note on the it's exotic damage... Especially point blank. Close you are... On the exotic damage abilities. Um, some of them gain from your threat scaling and some of them do not. If it's um, something like tractor beam repulsors or destabilizing resonance beam, they because they come directly from your ship, they gain your threat mod, your threat scaling, okay? Whether it's positive or negative. But if it's a gravity well or a Tykin's Rift or subspace vortex, anything that is remote from your ship, they do not gain your threat scaling, whether it's positive or negative. They act as whatever damage they're doing at zero distance to the enemy that's affected which generally is higher than the equivalent DPS from a weapon without the threat scaling behind it. So this is why you, if you're flying a science ship that's running, um, say, research lab consoles that don't have a threat scaler to them one way or the other, you'll sometimes find yourself getting targeted and blown up because you used... Um, you used exotic damage, and they, all of them count as zero distance damage, which is a, another threat scaling modifier. The closer you are, the higher your threat scale is. There, you mean there's some skill involved, like positioning? Yes. Yes, there, yes, there is. Oh, boy. What? I'm sorry. I actually have to learn how to pilot now. Woohoo! 
all no. of the piloting. Teacher Kirby, give us something here for this week in Trek. Yes. So this week in Trek, I actually found two nice little tidbits. Um, so first of all, yesterday was Data's birthday. So <laughs> according to um, one of the episodes, Data was activated on February 2nd in 2338. And that was his personal file was actually shown in the show, and I put a link to a picture of that on the uh, Memory Alpha Wiki in the show notes. Um, also on February seventh, two thousand thirty-eight, according to the Next Generation episode The Royale, on February seventh, all contact with the NASA Exploratory Shuttle uh, Charbidis, not sure how to pronounce that, uh, was lost on February 7th. So yeah, that's This Week in Trek. And then I have the next segment too, um, The Weird Science. So I was at school today working with my kids and uh, they read articles with me, nonfiction articles, and one of them picked this article about exploding toads. I swear to God, exploding toads in Germany. So according to this article, and I looked it up when I got home because I was like, whoa, no way. Um, in 2005, during the mating season of the common toad, there was an epidemic of toads literally inflating like a big balloon and pop, exploding. Guts everywhere, pieces all over the place, and I mean, they, they showed video and what I found it was very interesting it turns out that what was happening was during copulation because it was the mating season they're very focused little buggers they don't let go for anything and the local crows decided that when the toads were copulating was a good time to get a little snack so they would go and peck the back of the toads and peck out their liver and in the process would puncture the lungs and the toads would then slowly inflate over time would inflate and thereby explode from the puncture to the lung so it's quite interesting I put a few different links to it and you can see there's there was a lot of uh, a lot of stories about it um, it's been covered in National Geographic uh, different news outlets and whatnot. So there's quite a few links and videos if you want to see them, and that'll be in the show notes. So quite interesting, little tidbit there. And then uh, Timber had something he wanted to share. Yeah, I did. Um, I know it's it's kind of minor, but it was a nice experience to have this week. I actually went to see Star Trek: The Ultimate Voyage which is the concert that's circling around this year in multiple venues in the U.S. I believe it's also being seen overseas, though I can't confirm that. Um, so if I say it's about two and a half to three hours, they play 31 scores from the show. And to accompany it, you'll see multiple scenes from the show. They'll actually do full scenes like a muck time, or the ending of Best of Both Worlds Part 1, and they'll actually play it exceptionally well. You can tell this orchestra knows what they're doing. It is well worth your money and your time to go see this. You have not experienced Star Trek, in my opinion, until you've actually listened to a live orchestra play the music to their level and quality. It was absolutely amazing. So this is like a full score of music coming from that we hear from the show or from the movies and it's just a really good listen a really good movement as far as what what the feeling is yeah like you're for example they'll do the full scene of a muck time between kirk and spock so you'll be watching the the full scene of them fighting but while they're fighting instead of hearing the audio for the tv show you're listening to the orchestra play the theme, you honestly can't tell a difference that it's an orchestra playing it than it was recorded live for the TV show when it was originally put together. It, 
And because of the acoustics and everything, it actually makes it sound a lot better when you're watching the clip live. Be sure to get us a link for that so we can include it in the notes, please. Absolutely. All right. Well, we're going to wrap up this episode of the show here. Thank you very much to our guest, Zerg of the Agronauts. We're going to uh, have you the rest of the Agronauts again. One last thing. Um, on STO Builds, there's a really nice uh, post up from Adam of ranking all the personal traits. I'd recommend going and checking that out. It's got a lot of useful information. Ooh, do we have that in the notes? Did you put it in the notes? Yes, I did. Sweet. Thank you very much. You're now the chief of good tactics. Thank you. So thank you very much again for, for Zerg for joining us here. We're going to have you and some more of the Agronauts on later on. We'd like to thank everybody here on the panel for, as usual, their excellent work in this in trying to bring out as much information as possible. Uh, Zeph, I believe that you have something good coming down the pipeline that might actually get you well-known for a change. Who? Uh, I'm still experimenting on this project. I'm actually rendering right now, so I I'm not going to say anything just in case it flops. Look, man. Your flops are better than some people's successes. Let's put it that way. Odin? Yes. I, I, I want to thank you for the good tactics tip. I'm glad to know that, you know, using no torpedoes is a good tactic. I said you were going to be known as good tactics for showing what a Tim has done. Not that you and your cheesy-ass tactics are actually good tactics. I'm sorry, how many seconds of immunity can you get in this game again? You can get 43 seconds in the first minute, and then I believe it's 35 seconds for the next minute, and then it just resets after that. Yes, thank you very much. The math thank might you. be slightly off. I haven't paid attention to it in a while. Jeez. And that does not include methods that I know for having 100% resistance to everything for certain periods of time. I didn't even know that was possible. I thought you couldn't go over the 75. Yeah, there's a damage resistance and magnitude curve. I thought you couldn't go there, over... There is a way to break, set the curve for certain periods of time. You can ask Odin how many times he's hit me with high yields that did zero damage. It's disgusting. But then again, some of my high yields do zero damage because... Bugs. <laughs> yeah. Quantum field focus. Anyway. Good night, everybody. We will see you all in game. Farm up. Oh, and by the way, get ready for Dilithium Weekend. Enjoy. Yes. Good night. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night, folks.